Hello and welcome to Spokane County Spotlight. I'm Commissioner Amber Waldreff and my guest today is Spokane County Sheriff John Knowles. John, welcome to the program. It's my first time and I'm <laughs> glad to have you here. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, it's, it's my pleasure. Well, before we get started with the, the tough questions, um, I'm sure a lot of people in our audience are familiar uh, with you. You ran for election and were elected last year. Um, but maybe you can give us a little bit more introduction about yourself, uh, your background. So um, again, you know, a lot of this uh, was told on the campaign trail, but for those who uh, you know, maybe don't uh, pay too close attention to those sorts of things, um, you know, I grew up here in Spokane. Uh, we moved to Spokane uh, from Idaho Falls when I was eight months old. So while I can't say I was a lifelong resident, <laughs> born and raised here in Spokane, um, I've certainly spent a significant portion of my 50 years here. Um, I grew up in the Spokane Valley, um, one of six children. Um, and uh, attended Central Valley High School, um, Central Valley schools through my entire life. And, and my mom still resides in the house that we, uh, we, we've lived in uh, most of my life since the second grade. Um, and, it was, and it was really great growing up here in Spokane, and in particular the Spokane Valley. Um, you know, I, I worked a paper route since the time I was 11 years old. I remember that was my, my first real job. And, uh, and have not been unemployed since. Uh, so it, it's, it's been a good career. I learned a lot of things. You know, grew up uh, in a pretty religious household. Um, you know, learned, learned values through, through church and through the Boy Scout program, uh, which I was active in, and uh, really started a career and a life of service there. You know, that was something that was really important in my home growing up was we serve others. Um, you know, we didn't have a lot of means. I mean, I don't, I don't think we were destitute or poor by anything, fairly average. Um, but my parents made sure that we knew that, that we were supposed to serve uh, the people in our community um, and the people who needed help and the people who had, you know, maybe less than we did. Um, and, you know, while I never really uh, growing up thought about a career in law enforcement, when I look back and know kind of those values that my parents instilled in myself and my siblings, um, it's really not a surprise that I ended up in law enforcement uh, because it really is about serving your community, you know, giving something of yourself for others, um, which is what we do in law enforcement. And uh, so it just kind of makes sense now in hindsight, but that was certainly not something, <laughs> I do not come from a, a long family line wow. of law enforcement officers or anything like that. I'm the first actually. Um, so, you know, it, it was, it's been a great fit and I've been very fortunate to have this career ever since. So tell me about your, uh, your family now. Uh, you're married, you have children, yep. and I think a, grand, a grandson as well. Yes, um, I, I was blessed to find and, uh, and know my wife from a very early age. Um, I, we celebrated our 30th anniversary this year. And, uh, During the middle of a campaign. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, that was quite a quite an anniversary present to her. Um, but you know what? We had a great time uh, being together out on the campaign trail, spending time with each other. And I'm very very fortunate to have um, uh, a bride who she's with me no matter what. We enjoy each other's company no matter where we're at. Um, so you you know you'll see us out in the community together um, because we're okay doing whatever we need to do as long as we're together doing it. So um, we, again, we've been together for going on 30, 33 years this year. I've been married for 30. Um, we have four kids, um, you know, all, all grown. Um, you know, our oldest daughter is, she'll be 31 this year. And then, uh, you know, our youngest is 18. Um, two boys, two girls. I have a grandson who's two. Um, but we're fortunate that, that uh, they live here in Spokane. Um, but, uh, it's, it's been really, really fun raising, raising a family here in Spokane, um, and which is part of the reason I actually ran for sheriff, uh, because I care so much about how this community grows. Um, it's amazing to see how Spokane has changed from the Spokane of my childhood to what it is today. Um, this, this county and this city have grown in ways that I would have never imagined. And, uh, and it's been really, really good. But, but that's the reason I want to be the sheriff is because I think I can help continue to deliver a safe community. And I want to be a part of that um, and, and make sure that everybody has the same experience in Spokane that I have. So talk, talk about that journey uh, to becoming 
Sheriff, when, uh, when did you decide to go into law enforcement and how long have you been in law enforcement? So this is actually tomorrow will be oh, my wow. 25th anniversary with the county. So, um, you know, I was in college and I, when, I, when I first started at Eastern Washington University, I was going to major in chemical engineering. So, um, yeah, <laughs> it took a while for me to figure out it was that really That would have been not, a great career, too. It, it would have been. <laughs> it would have been. And, uh, you know, I was in my third semester of chemistry. Um, and again, I had two kids at the time um, working full time at Central Premix, driving a concrete truck. Um, I, I had a lot of a lot of things on my plate, things that I had put on my plate because of choices I had made in life uh, prior to that. But I was doing OK. Um, but I knew I could not really dedicate more time to my studies than I was at the time because I had to, you know, support my family and everything like that. And I thought, you know, I'm really not having any fun in these chemistry classes. Um, so what makes me think that I'm going to enjoy being a chemical engineer five years from now or however long it takes me to graduate? Um, and uh, a friend of mine, his name is Mike Kistler, uh, was sitting next to me kind of having the same experience and he said you know I have some friends who were taking some criminal justice classes and uh, I think I'm gonna go check some of those out and I said well what what would you take a criminal justice class for he goes well to become become a cop I said you can go to college to be a cop and he goes yeah my friends are doing <laughs> it so again married with two kids um, I probably didn't do the right thing and tell my wife hey I'm thinking about a career change you know path going forward I just signed up for a couple criminal justice classes without telling her. And uh, as I got into the classes, I thought, oh, this is really engaging. I'm really enjoying this. So after I took a few classes, passed them, then I let my wife know that I was shifting <laughs> majors. And, and, and bless her for being as gracious as she was. She said, you know what, if that's what you need to do, that, that's fine. She probably had a lot of question marks because, again, as I said, no one in her side of the family, no one in my side of the family had ever been in law enforcement. Um, and I really thought, oh, I'll, I'll go into federal law enforcement. I'd love to work for the Secret Service. I knew an FBI agent growing up. And uh, he always had very intriguing stories. Well, um, you know, fast forward to 1995, 1996, uh, I had to go do my professional internship, you know, for my degree. And I did that out at the Kootenai County Sheriff's Office. And I, I will always remember my first day with uh, Sergeant Dan Sumas at the time. Uh, he ended up re retiring as a captain over there. Um, he said, so what do you want to do, John? And I said, well, I think I'm going to go into federal law enforcement. And he, he smiled and he said, <laughs> well, by the time you're done with this internship, we're going to have you believing that local law enforcement is where it's at. And, uh, and he was right. You know, by the time wow. I got done doing that internship, I said, I think law enforcement will be great. Local law enforcement is where I want to be. Um, and within a year and a half, you know, I was hired by the Spokane County Sheriff's Office and, uh, I, I will tell you, I've been very, very fortunate. Um, this has been a great career. Um, I, love, I love police work. I love working with our community. I love talking to the citizens. I love helping them. Um, I love going into somebody's home and making a positive difference. I love going into a business and making a positive difference. Um, and, and until I probably became a lieutenant, I never felt like I went to work a day in my life. Um, you know, management and leadership poses their own challenges and, and some days it's rewarding, most days it's rewarding, some mm -hmm. days it's a challenge. Um, but I will tell you, when I was actually you know, out on the street being a detective or being a patrolman, um, I never worked a day in my life and, and I've been fortunate to, to have that experience. Well, that's, so. that's wonderful. I, you, told, you talked about your values growing up and service and community. Um, I'm sure you're bringing that You've brought that over the last 25 years, and uh, maybe we could talk about your leadership style. This is the first time we've had a new sheriff in many years in Spokane County. So tell us about your leadership style and you know what you plan to do um, as you move into this new role. So you know a lot of people um, probably recognize that law enforcement organizations tend to be very paramilitary-like in their organizational structure. The sheriff's office isn't different. Um, what I will say that I bring to the sheriff's office in my leadership style is I will empower people 
to make decisions. Um, I firmly believe, and it's been my experience, you know, in the last 25 years, um, you know, I've held every rank inside the sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. So I have experience being a first level supervisor to a mid-level manager to, you know, executive level experience. So I have that perspective. And what I have found is the most effective thing I can do for my organization is empower the people who are working to make decisions because they have the most accurate information all the time. So I have to make sure that everybody has the tools and the knowledge and the skills to make the right decision right at that moment. Um, and it sounds very simple. It's a huge challenge in any organization to be able to do that. It's like that. the servant leadership model. It, and it, it sounds really easy, but it can be really hard to implement, right? Well, I mean, yeah. People yeah. need to have feel safe that they can make those decisions and that uh, you know they'll be supported, and uh, that takes a lot of time and training and trust. It it does, and and the thing is, is you again, you you hit on it. You they have to trust their leaders. The leaders have to trust the people that they're empowering to make those decisions, and and it takes a significant amount of introspection on the leader's part to say okay, how am I going to allow this person to influence? And if I have a problem with what's going on, is it because I didn't train them well enough, I didn't give them enough information, or is it just because they're approaching this differently than I would otherwise? And to have the wisdom to say, okay, just because it's not the way I would do it, is this getting us to the destination? Is it getting us to the goal anyway? And can I let that go? Um, I've had to learn a lot about that in my <laughs> life too. I might do it differently, but if we're getting to the outcome, that's the outcome that we you know, agree said on. that yeah. was going to be what we were working towards, then, hey, sometimes someone might have a better way to get there or just a different way. And right. It, that's okay. Right. And, that, and, that's, <laughs> and that is really the key in, in leadership. And, yes. Um, you know, the, the first thing, one thing that my division last year focused on and one thing I have the entire agency focused on this year, and it's something I believe pretty strongly is and just, and it's one word, um, it's excellence. Um, our, this great country that we live in was built on excellence. Um, this country is set up to reward people who perform who perform excellently, who, you know, we, we innovate like no other country in the world because we, we believe in excellence, excellence in everything we do. Um, and I think an organization that focuses on excellence will deliver the best, in our case, the best law enforcement services and the best community safety anywhere if we focus on doing everything we do to the highest standard. Um, and it's a lofty goal and it's one we will never attain completely because we will always develop better ways to do the things mm -hmm. that we do. Um, one of the focuses that I have this year for the agency is, is you know, excellence in community policing and community engagement. Um, so what does that mean? When you say community policing, describe that for folks. Because yeah. my question for you was going to be, what are some of your priorities? And you're talking about excellence, empowering those around you in the organization. So talk about community policing. What does that mean? So community policing looks like a whole bunch of different things and it is a buzzword to some extent. But what I'm talking about is, is on the granular level, mm -hmm. the way the deputies engage and the way our non-commissioned employees engage with the public. Right now, we're really good at responding to calls for service. Um, when people have emergency situations, we show up and our people do a really, really good job. I want our personnel to start focusing on whenever they can and however possible, engaging with the community when it's not an emergency, showing up at um, you know Grange meetings when we have the chance to do it. Not, not just as a deliberate, hey, I've been assigned to do this, but hey, I have some bandwidth or maybe my sergeant has freed up enough bandwidth mm -hmm. in my schedule where I can show up to a Grange meeting or a scope meeting or mm -hmm. a school board meeting. You know, it shouldn't be abnormal for a deputy to drop in to some of these community events, community activities, um, just because they have the bandwidth. You know, I, right now, at times we're there because we deliberately want people to be there because, oh, there might be a safety concern at a school board meeting or, or something. I want it to be more normal that the deputies are there because they're part of the community. Um, you so know, it's more of a proactive 
relationship building right. opportunity rather than just reacting to right. what happens, but but building building the trust in the and that proactive approach right. to policing. Yeah, and the conversation I'm having with our deputies and our employees is this. All these activities build trust with our community on an individual level. And we are gonna rely on that trust when the storms come. And the storms will come. They have for the last three or four years where mm -hmm. you know policing as a whole has been challenged, um, it's been questioned. We have a lot of support from our community because we do have community trust and support. It can always be better. We can always build more trust in those communities. Mm -hmm. And that way, when things happen, like what happened recently in Memphis, people can be appalled at what happened. And, and it was appalling. But I also want our citizens to go, well, it's terrible and that's tragic that it happened here. But our sheriff's department doesn't do that. I know our cops here in Spokane and they don't do that. We don't behave that way, we don't tolerate it and it just won't happen. Um, you know, we won't have to make overt statements to our community because our community just knows we don't do that and we won't tolerate it because we won't. And that's how those relationships will benefit our community going into the future. And, and we need to make those kind of investments in our relationship with our community. So talk about the types of, um, it has been a difficult last three or four years in policing. So what, uh, what are the challenges and the opportunities that you see then um, moving out of this period? I mean, it, I think it's not just in policing, but it's the pandemic, it's our political um, environment. It's, it's been a challenging time in, in our country. And how do you, you know, what do you, what do you see as the opportunities in Spokane County as you move forward in your role to, uh, to build the trust, the partnerships? So I, I think it's important, and again, this, this goes, as you pointed out, this goes far more broadly than just the police's relationship with the community. It's about our relationships with each other as a society, as you know, and, and we can just narrow it down to just our community here in Spokane. Um, we all need to start remembering that we're Americans, right? That we actually are brothers and sisters in this great country that we can work through the challenges we have. And I've unfortunately seen, and I think you alluded to it, is, is we've all picked sides now and we're either on this side or we're on that side and we forget that no, there's, there's no sides here. This is our community. We have to figure out a way to be in this region together, mm -hmm. work for everybody's benefit, make sure that everybody has opportunity to succeed here, that our kids, my dream is, is that we have a community where every kid in Spokane County wakes up in the morning knowing that they have the potential and the opportunity in this great country to do and become whatever they want. Um, you know, that was something my parents instilled in me growing up is, is well, I, it was expected that I would go to college. It was expected. They didn't care what I did, but I knew from a very young age that it was my obligation to do it. And my parents didn't have the means to pay for it. I had to pay for it myself. It's a lot of hard work, but we need every kid in this country. It doesn't matter whether they're hmm. eight years old or 28 years old, that if they're willing to do the work in this country, and I fully believe that anybody who's willing to put in the work can do anything they want. Um, I could go be a doctor today. If I decided I wanted to put in the work, John Knowles could chuck everything I've done and go be a doctor in this country if I wanted to, if I was willing to do the work. And I want everybody to recognize that potential in themselves, you know, to do whatever they want, so. It's a bit altruistic, but but that's no, who I am. I believe in the individual. You know, that's right? why I ran for office too, and um, I share a lot of the same uh, focus and the belief that every child, no matter what zip code that you grow up in, um, no matter the color of your skin or your religion, or um, that you're able to reach that full potential. And so, you know, I think. I think there's a lot there that um, I'm looking forward to working with you on. So a couple, couple more questions as okay. we finish out the show here. It's been really interesting uh, hearing your stories and uh, you know, kind of thinking about your, your priorities and your focus on excellence. I'm really um, excited about that. Could you talk a little bit about the legacy that longtime Sheriff Ozzie Knezovich leaves 
16, is it 16 years that he was sheriff? Yes. And uh, what's it like to take up the mantle, so to speak, and uh, shape the role um, in, a, in a new and different way? So, you know, um, Sheriff Knezovich did demand excellence. I don't know that he ever articulated it that way, but you just knew that he expected performance. He, I mean, and here's the thing. We have to have the utmost integrity in law enforcement. I think we should expect it of every citizen everywhere. But in law enforcement in particular, we expect um, just impeccable integrity. That is a legacy that, that Sheriff Knezovich has left and one that I will continue to reinforce. We have to have it. And it, and it does support this whole idea of excellence. Mm -hmm. um, the men and women of the sheriff's office, it, it's hard to describe unless people have been out and done this kind of service work that um, it days, it's thankless. Um, I was at the Boy Scout breakfast this morning mm. and they talked about what a hero was and it was somebody who does something for someone else and they get nothing in return or they're giving something of themselves um, with nothing in return. The men and women of the sheriff's office, yes, were compensated, were compensated very well. But I promise you, every man and woman in the sheriff's office, they are giving more than they're receiving. Um, this job takes a toll. Mm -hmm. um, and in the last five years, it's probably taken more of a toll than it traditionally has. Um, nobody comes into this career um, one way and leaves the same way. Um, I can tell you I haven't. Um, I'm changed. I'm a different person than I used to be. Um, in some ways, good. Um, and in some ways, probably not. There are, some, there are probably some things that I'll carry with me for the rest of my life um, that, boy, if I had a choice, I'd, I'd like to unload them, but I don't get that, I don't get that choice. So we're gonna focus on making sure our people are prepared to handle that burden, to take it, to continue serving the community, do the right things for the right reasons, um, and make sure our people are trained to do it. Sheriff Knezovich did that. I will make sure we continue to go down that road. And we'll make sure that we keep innovating the ways that we do police work. And sometimes innovation is going to look a lot like the things that we used to do 50 and 60 years ago. <laughs> but we're just going to refocus. Community policing. Correct. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> and there are some new things that we'll do that have not been done before. But there's going to be a lot of things that we're going to start doing again. Right. Um, and they'll feel new and they'll feel fresh but they're not doing fresh. It's things that, that have been going on in policing since the 50s and 60s and 70s that we've drifted away from because of you know lack of resources and things like that. But um, we're going to refocus on that. And, uh, and again, it's to, to help make sure our community understands we're there for them and that they know that our law enforcement officers, our deputies, our police officers are excellent and, and that they are getting what they need from us. So it's my first uh, month as a county commissioner and your first month as a sheriff. How do you see the relationship with, between the sheriff's office and the board of county commissioners? What are you looking for in terms of partnership and working together and the resources that you just mentioned? You know, um, Having being an elected sheriff um, and as a, a elected head of a law enforcement agency, um, I get the opportunity to provide service in the best way that I know how and to set the direction of that agency. Now, the Board of County Commissioners have a unique uh, position and it will be a unique partnership <laughs> because you all have to fund it. Um, yes. And, and there can be some control there um, through funding. But what my intent is. I will come to the board with what I think are the best ways to provide public safety. Um, and, and I expect the board to challenge me on, okay, why are we doing this? How's it going to positively affect public safety? Mm -hmm. and, and are we doing it the best way and the most fiscally responsible way? I expect that. And I think um, that it's great that we are questioned on how we do that. However, I do need it to be a partnership with county commissioners saying, okay, Sheriff, you said you need this. We agree our community needs this. We're going to give you the funding to do it. And, and there has to be trust there 
between us, that I'm not being wasteful of the resources, um, fully recognizing that the county commissioners aren't just an open ATM. Um, it's just <laughs> not it's just not the case, right? You all have an obligation to be yes. good financial stewards. Um, and I'm learning how <laughs> all the pieces of the our criminal justice system really do need resources and they all play together. It, you know, they all interact. Yes. From your deputies to the courts and the judges and all of the services that surround our, our judicial system to our jails and our detention and, and um, all the services around uh, our prosecutors, our public defenders. So I'm, I'm looking forward to working with you on how all those pieces work together so we can get the most effective criminal justice system here in Spokane County that really makes people's lives better. And we, and we need that. And, and I recognize as the, as the sheriff that, oh, I could go out and be selfish all I wanted, but I recognize that we are part of a criminal justice system. And right now, um, there are parts of our system that aren't working so well right now. Um, you know, clearly, um, you know, Prosecutor Larry Haskell, he would tell you he needs more people to be more effective. Our judges will tell you they, they need, need more, more personnel, <laughs> which means we need more yes. capacity. We yes. need building space to put those judges in. We certainly need more and different jail capacity than we have today for us to provide good public safety. Um, and we need more public defenders, too. Yeah, everyone involved in the system deserves to have the resources, whether you are uh, someone that is um, being, you know, held for a crime, or if you're a victim, everybody in that system deserves to have, you know, a justice right. uh, outcome that is timely and uh, equitable. So a lot to work on together. Yeah. Well, right, right. And, I think we're getting close to the end yeah. of our time. <laughs> and, and remember, and the one thing I will say is we have to emphasize, when all of that works well, then the people who are out in our community, they're safe. Our neighborhoods are safe, our communities are safe, and that's gotta be our primary yes. primary goal. I share that goal. Well, I uh, thank you. Thank you so You're much welcome. for your time today, and it's been great talking with you. I hope everyone got a chance to get to know you a little bit better. Oh, thank you very much, it was good to be here. I'd like to remind our audience that this program and videos from all our public meetings can be accessed on our Spokane County homepage, and our Spokane County YouTube channel. I'm County Commissioner Amber Waldruff. Thank you for joining us for the Spokane County Spotlight.